We are back with another series. Let's revise PYQs. This will benefit you in your upcoming exam. Let's look at the first question from this video. Question number 1. What is the probable diagnosis for a 25-year-old woman who presents with symptoms such as anxiety, palpitations, sweating, breathlessness, chest pain, and a sense of impending doom? The patient mentions having encountered approximately 5 to 6 comparable episodes in the last half year, with each episode persisting for around 20 to 30 minutes. Your option are and the correct answer is panic disorder. Here is the explanation. Panic disorder. So, so before that, let us try to understand what is a panic attack. So, panic attack is an acute, sudden attack of intense anxiety. So, it is first, it is sudden and there is intense, severe anxiety with symptoms like there is palpitations, then there is sweating, patient may complain of tremors, shortness of breath, chest pain may be there, then depersonalization, you know, which is, you know, feeling of detachment from self or there may be derealization, you know, which is a feeling of detachment from the surroundings or feeling of unreal, unreality, okay. So, along with these symptoms, so there is sudden attack of intense anxiety accompanied by these symptoms. Along with this very important, in a panic attack, there is fear of impending doom. Doom is that some everything is you know about to end. Impending means it is about to occur. So patient you know complains that there is a feeling that everything is about to end or there is a fear of dying. I am dying. Oh my god. You know there is a fear that I am dying or you know I am losing control or I am going crazy. So this is what happens in a panic attack. Sudden onset of acute anxiety, severe anxiety along with this fear that you know I am about to die. This is what is a panic attack. Now, recurrent panic attacks, we say, is a panic disorder. So, person having multiple such panic attacks is panic disorder. Now, also, let's remember that the panic attacks which occur, they are unexpected. Okay, that means they are not restricted to any particular situation. Okay, so person can have these panic attacks anywhere or it can occur anytime. So, there are no, you know, triggers or cues, you know, which would occur before the onset. They could occur anytime, okay. And generally, they last for, you know, a few minutes, maybe, you know, 20 to 30 minutes and rarely they may last even more than one hour, okay. So, there is sudden onset of anxiety, okay, and, you know, which may, you know, peak in around 10 minutes and then the anxiety would decrease and the person may become all well, okay. So, these panic attacks occurring, you know, more than one month, we say, patient has panic disorder okay and in between these attacks the patient is free from anxiety symptoms okay for example if you look at this diagram so a patient say you know a patient had an episode of sudden onset of anxiety okay he says when he was at his home okay so it was sudden onset of anxiety lasted for a few minutes and the person become all well okay thereafter after few days let us say so patient says after few days the patient had another similar attack. Patient had another similar attack when he was at his office. Okay. In between, if you see, the patient is all well. So, in between, he would say, you know, the person would say that, you know, everything he was doing as before. Okay. Again, let us say another, another similar attack occur after few days. Let us say when the person was driving in his car. Okay. So, another similar episode occur. Now, if you see, in this diagram, you could appreciate, you know, in between the person is becoming all well. There is no anxiety. This is how characteristically a person with panic disorder would come. Now, also, you know, in between, patient may have what is known as anticipatory anxiety. So, in between this normal, you know, phase when there is no anxiety, patient may sometimes complain of anticipatory anxiety. That means they may fear that what if next panic attack may occur anytime, okay. So, this is basically as the name suggests, you can see there is anxiety in anticipation of another attack, okay. So, this may occur in patients with panic disorder. Now, when we talk about epidemiology as we discussed, again, it is more in females than male, maybe two to three times more common in females than male and the mean age of onset is around 25 years. Now, the most common comorbidity or most common comorbid condition with panic disorder. So, 
many times patient with panic disorder may also have some other psychiatric illness as well and it is seen that with panic disorder the most common abnormality or comorbidity is agoraphobia again it's a it's another type of anxiety disorder which we will discuss okay now coming to the etiology so there are certain important neurotransmitters which are implicated for the development of panic disorders like norepinephrine serotonin gaba and also more recently you know cholecystokinin has also been implicated in the development of panic disorder question number 2 what could be the likely diagnosis for a 16 year old girl who experiences strong food cravings and engages in excessive eating followed by self induced vomiting your option are and the correct answer is bulimia nervosa here is the explanation no bulimia is derived from greek word meaning ox hunger again bulimia nervosa is more common in females than males again the ratio is nearly 10 is to 1 most common age of onset of bulimia nervosa is late adolescent or young adulthood it is slightly the onset is slightly late than anorexia nervosa so anorexia nervosa you know was occurring between 14 to 18 they may occur you know 17 18 19 20 20 in this age group they may occur more commonly episodes of binge eating are seen in bulimia nervosa which are combined with inappropriate ways of preventing weight gain so certain compensatory mechanisms may be used so clinical features are there are episodes of binge eating in which as we had discussed patient eats large amount of food and which is usually consumed in short duration associated with a feeling of lack of control that the person is not able to control eating may be seen in these binge episodes these are followed by compensatory behavior to prevent weight gain so these compensatory behaviors include purging behaviors like self induced vomiting then person may use laxatives diuretics emetics or sometimes patient may do excessive exercise or sometimes fasting so these patients have episodes of binge eating followed by compensatory behavior while in anorexia nervosa the other three clinical features we had discussed those are also there these episodes generally occur at least once every week for three continuous months then we make a diagnosis of bulimia nervosa question number 3 What is the most probable diagnosis for a woman who is experiencing tearfulness, mood swings, and occasional insomnia, and is four days postpartum? Your option are, and the correct answer is postpartum blues. Here is the explanation: postpartum blues, or also known as baby blues. Okay, postpartum means basically after delivery. Okay. so postpartum blues. You know, blue is you know a term used when the person is sad. You know, there are songs. You know, feeling blue. feeling blue so you know this is denoting sadness so what is postpartum blues again you know it is seen in 30 to 75% of women after childbirth and the onset generally you know starts 3 to 5 days after childbirth okay now symptoms generally are there transient you know mood symptoms depressive symptoms like sadness mood lability tearfulness may be there irritability may be there sleep disturbances may be there so these are transient symptoms temporary symptoms they may last for few days to weeks and subsequently they will resolve spontaneously okay so again it's common you know 30 to 75% of the women may you know experience such changes again you know symptoms more severe symptoms you know like anhedonia suicidal thoughts thoughts of harming the baby they are generally not seen in in postpartum blues okay and generally guilt may be you know absent or it will be very mild okay and there is you know history of mood disorder or any family history of mood disorder is generally not seen okay such associations are not seen with postpartum blues okay question number 4 what is the term used to describe the occurrence when a therapist experiences a combination of conscious and unconscious emotions towards their patient during psychotherapy your option are and the correct answer is countertransference here is the explanation countertransference so countertransference as the name suggest it is feelings of the therapist towards the patient again these feelings can be conscious and unconscious and again they can be positive feelings or negative feelings so which may reflect in the behavior for example the therapist is missing the appointments or you know during the interview or during the therapy session the therapist is appearing to be sleepy so this is counter transference this is feelings of the therapist towards the patient question 5 
What is the probable diagnosis for a chronic alcoholic who arrives at the emergency department presenting confusion, ataxia, painful eye movements, and involvement of the sixth cranial nerve? Your options are. And the correct answer is Wernicke's encephalopathy. Here's the explanation. So, Wernicke's encephalopathy generally the onset is acute or sudden. So, the symptoms would develop within few hours or maybe within few days. The symptoms you can remember with the mnemonic GOA. So, G stands for global confusion. So, person appears to be in a confused state. Now, please remember even in delirium tremens, there may be confusion seen. But that along with other symptoms of withdrawal will be there. And delirium tremens occur in withdrawal state. So, patient would have stopped taking alcohol and then those symptoms would have developed. While Wernicke's encephalopathy may occur despite the patient is continuously taking alcohol and along with global confusion, patient may also have other symptoms. So O is ophthalmoplegia. So patient may present with horizontal nystagmus or there may be gaze palsy. So may, patient may come with deviated eyes. Patient may come like this. The person is not able to move his eyes. So such patients, you know, such symptoms may be present in the patient. It is seen that sixth nerve palsy generally is the most common and third nerve palsy is the second most common. Then A is ataxia. A is ataxia. So patient may come with history of, you know, false. Patient is not able to move properly. There is problems in gait. So these are the symptoms seen in Wernicke's encephalopathy, global confusion, ophthalmoplegia and ataxia. Question 6. What medication is typically prescribed to treat the condition experienced by a 25-year-old woman who complains of a sensation resembling creepy crawling in her legs? This symptom is more pronounced at night and hinders her ability to sleep. However, she finds relief by either engaging in walking or moving her legs. Your options are And the correct answer is Primipso. Here's the explanation. Restless leg syndrome, also sometimes known as Ekbom syndrome. What happens as the name suggests, restless leg? There is an irresistible urge to move the legs when the person is at rest or while trying to fall asleep. So, person has an urge to move the legs. So, there is restlessness in the leg. The, and there is, you know, uncomfortable sensation in the legs, you know, such as insects crawling. So, patient may complain that he is feeling as if some insects are crawling. That is why it is also known as Ekbom syndrome, which gets relieved by moving which gets relieved by moving the leg or walking around. So person, you know, again may have difficulty to be at rest or, you know, fall asleep and the person may start moving the leg or keep on walking. They can, again, it can cause difficulty in sleep initiation as patient keeps on moving the leg. So again, it can lead to secondary insomnia. Now again, uremia, neuropathies, iron and folic acid deficiencies can cause secondary restless leg syndrome. Again, so when we are seeing such patient, you need to see that some of these important abnormalities may be seen in these patients. Ferritin levels should be checked in all the patients of restless leg syndrome. When we talk about the treatment, three dopamine agonists which have been approved by the FDA for treatment of restless leg syndrome are Pramipexol, Ropinirol and Rotiglotin. So these are three important dopamine agonists which have been approved by the FDA for RLS treatment. Question 7. A patient stopped alcohol consumption for three days and presented with irritability, disorientation, paranoid delusions, agitation, visual hallucinations, and altered sensorium. What is the likely diagnosis in this case? Your options are. And the correct answer is delirium tremens. Here's the explanation. Delirium tremens. Delirium tremens may develop. So, it's a very, very severe form of alcohol withdrawal. So, what is delirium tremens? There is disturbance of consciousness. Now, person is in a delirium state. So, this Mr. Depp, his consciousness is impaired. He is disoriented. So, the, when the family members reach the hospitals, he is not able to identify the time. He is not able to identify the place. He is saying he is at his home. Although he is in the hospital, he is not able to identify the, the person. So, there is disorientation to time. Even in delirium, tremens, there may be hallucinations. But very important to remember here, more common, most common hallucination in delirium tremens is visual hallucination. So, he is reporting maybe that there are small 
you know snakes you can see which are crawling so visual hallucinations are more common of course auditory hallucinations can also occur and of, of course other symptoms like autonomic hyperactivity tremors may also be seen so now he's landed into delirium tremors question 8 What non-pharmacological measures can be recommended to a middle-aged man who experiences premature ejaculation during intercourse? Your options are And the correct answer is squeeze technique. Here's the explanation. Squeeze technique which was again given by Masters and Johnson. So what happens in the squeeze technique when the male partner gets, you know, feeling of impending ejaculation, when the partner feels that ejaculation is about to occur? he or his partner squeezes the coronal ridge of the glands resulting in inhibition of ejaculation okay so ejaculation subsequently is not allowed before ejaculation only it is inhibited so it is squeezed the penis it is squeezed so this is squeeze technique so what happens basically so it is you know done two three times and then subsequently in the fourth time time the person is said that he can indulge into complete intercourse so basically it raises the threshold for penile excitability so it is one technique which is found to be effective question 9 which one of the options below represents a formal thought disorder your options are and the correct answer is derailment here's the explanation derailment very interesting derailment or also known as night's move thinking now again you know try to see the name you will be able to understand the concept <clears throat> so what is derailment <laughs> so a train a rail was moving on track and it got derailed okay so this is derailment that means the person who was on track his thoughts were on track and suddenly he got derailed or also known as night's move thinking how does a night how does a night moves on a chess board it goes straight and then takes a turn goes straight and then takes a sudden turn okay so this is what is happening in thinking okay so what happens here is the person jump off the track to move to a different topic <clears throat> and there is no logical association between these topics so you're talking to a person he's on track and suddenly he gets derailed so if you just see the name and you will understand the concept okay so let us see you know what you know this person may you know appear like so let us say the person is on track a followed by b now rather than going to track rather than going to cde on that same track he changes track and comes to a new topic okay this is what is derailment again you know suppose again you ask what will you do if you want to have a cup of coffee you know with your friend so he may say you know i'll book a cab i will reach cafe you know and rather go, rather than going on that topic he changes the topic you know the weather is very cold you know i thought you know i should buy a muffler and he goes to that new topic This is what is derailment. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found the video interesting. See you in the next one.